One of the things that you're expected to know how to do in general chemistry is write the electron configuration for the first 20 elements. And if you know the pattern, it's really easy. So we're going to learn the pattern for writing the electron configuration for the first 20 elements on the periodic table. So we're going to go from hydrogen all the way to number 20, calcium. And we stop at calcium because over here we have the transition metals. And the transition metals, they're a little bit more challenging. So we're stopping at number 20, calcium. So let's take a look at the orbital blocks on the periodic table. That's what's going to give us our pattern. Everything in group 1 ends in S1. Everything in group 2 ends in S2. Then we have our D, D1 through 10. And we have P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Down here we'd have our F block, but we're not worried about that right now. So this is our pattern. To write the electron configuration for those first 20 elements, we're just going to follow through the pattern here. So let's do that. We'll start with hydrogen. So when we look at the atomic number, that's the number of protons. And since all of the elements on the periodic table are neutral, that means the protons will equal electrons. Hydrogen, it has one electron. So we write hydrogen, and we start out with 1s. And since it only has one electron, we're just going to put 1s1. That's the electron configuration for hydrogen. We go over here to atomic number two, helium. So helium's a little bit of an exception. It only has two electrons. So we put our two electrons in the 1s. This is the configuration for helium. And now we're full. We have to go to the next energy level. That's why helium is a noble gas. So from helium, we're going to go to lithium. Lithium right here, that's in the first group. So we know it ends in an s1. But since it's in the second period, it's going to be a 2s1. So 2s1, that's the electron configuration for lithium. Or beryllium, the next one over. We're now in the 2s in the second group, 2. 2s2, if you add these numbers up, gives us 4. This is the configuration for beryllium. Look at boron. Over here at boron, atomic number 5, 5 protons, 5 electrons. And now we're in the 2p. This is the 2p1. So we just put 2p1. 2 plus 2 plus 1, that gives us 5. That's the electron configuration for boron. For carbon, we're in the 2p2. Nitrogen, 2p3. Oxygen, 2p4. Fluorine, 2p5. And notice that these electrons, they add up to 9. 2 plus 2 plus 5, that gives us the 9 there. So with neon, we're at 2p6, and we're done with the second energy level. So neon has this second energy level full with eight electrons. That's an octet, and neon is a noble gas. From neon, we go over to number 11, sodium. For sodium, we're in the third energy level. One, two, three, third energy level here. So we're going to start out again with 3s1. Magnesium with atomic number 12 has 12 protons, 12 electrons, so now we have 3s2. For magnesium, we go over here to aluminum. We're back in the p block again in the third period, so we have 3p, since we're in the first part of that p group here, 3p1. And if you add these numbers up, they equal 13. Next, we go to silicon, and we're in p1, p2. For phosphorus, 1, 2, 3, 3P3. Sulfur, we have 3P4. Chlorine, 3P5. And for argon, we fill this energy level up with 8 electrons. We have 3P6. And argon, this energy level is full. That makes it a noble gas. And now since this energy level is full, the third energy level, we go to the fourth energy level. We have potassium. And since we're adding another energy level, we start out with 4s, and we're in the first group, 4s1. And then for calcium, we have these 20 electrons, and we're ending in this 4s2 here. And that's the electron configuration for calcium. So that's how you do the electron configurations for the first 20 elements on the periodic table. You can continue writing the configurations into these transition metals here, but you do start running into exceptions that could cause you some problems here. So often we stop at the first 20 in general chemistry. You can also use the diagonal rule to figure out the configuration for the first 20 elements on the periodic table.
it's a little bit more work because you have to keep going through each time for every element as opposed to just adding one electron as you move through the table here. If you need help using this diagonal rule, there's a link at the end of this video to help you do that. This is Dr. B with the electron configurations for the first 20 elements on the periodic table. Thanks for watching.